Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman and I dissect the world's most exciting businesses so that both you and I can grow ours faster. Today I'm talking about the tie-dye industry, specifically tie-dye kits. Now why the fudge am I talking about tie-dyes? Well, first of all, look at this beautiful tie-dye shirt I have here. Let me give you a quick story. So last weekend, I was at our family camp in the Adirondack Mountains in New York. And the kids and I and my nephews uh, and my wife and, and uh, most of my family went and at the local library, there was a free tie dye event. You could bring your own t-shirt or you could pay five bucks and they'll give you their shirt and you could tie dye it. They give you the patterns and things like that. And I'm like, oh, cool. This sounds fun. And uh, Lindsay's, Lindsay's cousin mentioned like, oh, this is a big industry. Like the tie dye industry is a big industry. And I was like, oh, what? Really? Like, yeah, I, I could see how like niche markets like this and knitting and, uh, you know, crocheting and things like that could be, could be big. Okay. So that, you know, that was fun. The event was great. This is the shirt I made. Uh, and then the next day or the day after that, I was listening to a podcast where the two, the, the podcast was about the tie dye industry and how massive it is. And, how there's uh, there's nine to nine figure companies in that industry that are absolutely killing it in this niche market, and I got super curious as I always do, and I'm like, who's a big player in this? How much money are they making? You know, generally, like you know, how popular is it? So decided to do a case study video right here about the tie dye industry. So. Uh, with these case study videos, I have a new framework, very simple framework. It's the who, what, when, where, how, why framework. Uh, and, and it just covers these businesses or these industries. So hopefully you and I can both learn from these businesses and these industries and apply some of these, these strategies uh, that, are, that are causing them to grow to our own businesses. So let's dive in, shall we? Okay, so let me see here. All right, so this is Google Trends. I love this this uh, free tool. Uh, it lets you look at trends for particular keywords, uh, and, and it measures interest, right? So if you look right here, the interest is number represents search interest relative to the highest point of the chart given re given region at that time. So um, it's basically like scoring the interest based on search, you know, Google searches and things like that, right? So you just go to Google Trends, you could look it up. So we typed it, I typed in tie-dye kit. So the reason I use tie-dye kit is because I wanted to see what is the product. Like what's the thing that is sort of the most popular in this particular industry? Now, if I typed in tie-dye, there's tie-dye shirts, there's uh, uh, you know tie-dye products, things like that, right? So tie-dye kits are the sort of hobby thing. This is the thing that people would go buy to do a DIY tie-dye shirts or dresses or anything basically that's white that you can dye. Uh, and before, one other thing I should mention is that before I did this, um, I looked at the total industry size of the, not just dye industry, because that's massive, like apparel dye, but tie dye industry is a $10 billion industry. What? Tie dye industry is, is a $10 billion industry. And so these would be, and I'm sure there's some some bleed over bleed is that pun you know the ink bleeds there's some some bleed over into the just apparel dyeing industry with those numbers m my guess is but uh but the tie dye industry regardless being a billion dollar industry is, is crazy right so it's a big industry so if we go back and we look at the interest over time this uh this is pretty pretty awesome but makes sense too right so you got 2017 this is the past five years uh interest is, you know, relatively low. It's a niche market, so it's not going to be huge, right? And then all of a sudden, looky here, the pandemic hits, everybody's inside, parents are looking for ways to entertain their kids, and boom, look at this chart, flying high, right? All the way up to 100 <laughs> in July of 2020. That interest goes crazy. That's the 100 is the highest interest score you could have. So, this, along with all those other niche uh, hobby type uh, industries, went gangbusters, blew up, right? And then it came back down. But if you notice, it kind of stayed a little higher. Uh, 22, this is through about a year ago, right? July 4th, 2021. 
started to dip down a little bit, um, surprisingly, in the winter. But that makes sense, actually. The winter, people aren't tie-dyeing because tie-dye is outside usually. It's like a summertime thing. And it started to grow back up here in the summer. And let's just look and see if it's seasonal before, before the pandemic. So June, it's at about 13 of an interest rate back here. This is uh, 2019. It's about a 13. So I guess that's about average in the summertime. And then back up here, summertime, 11, 13. So it's, it's, it's back to normal levels. Okay. So that being said, we can look at some other data here, like where's the biggest interest? Delaware, Connecticut, West Virginia, Vermont, New Jersey. Seems to be an East Coast thing, I guess, huh? Uh, let me see if I can switch it to global, worldwide. Let's see where we're at here. Yeah, same chart, basically. Uh, but it did stay higher globally after the pandemic. Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom. So definitely first world countries are caring about tie-dye the most, right? Okay, uh, related topics. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little research, right? So remember, framework is who, what, when, where, why, how. Uh, so let's start with who. So if you go over to Google and you, you search tie-dye kit, Okay, a, a quick little tip here is you can look at tie-dye kit and you can look at what in Google, type it in and then look at what's suggested because these are usually the top search terms uh, that people put into Google. So tie-dye kits for kids, tie-dye kit Amazon, major player alert, uh, permanent tie-dye kit, best tie-dye kit. Okay, what is the best tie-dye kit to use? So these are what people are asking right here. Okay, who's showing up? <clears throat> As you could su suspect, Amazon's up there first. These are ads, by the way. So these are companies running ads, which means they're probably making a good profit return on investment for these products. Target, Walmart, Michaels, Walmart, uh, Walmart, Michaels, Target, Michaels, Walmart. So <clears throat> looks like the major kind of retail distributors are the ones, which makes sense, right? This is a family sort of activity. Uh, these retailers are focused on family. Um, and then you come down here and you got some other brands that are trying to kind of steal some of the share. So Tulip Color, let's just see what Tulip Color is. Tulip Color looks like a, a distributor. Tulip Road. So mm, looks like they're white labeling their own products out of stock. Tulip Color. So they make their own, this is a manufacturer. Or, or a brand uh, that gets products manufactured for them. So they are not a retailer, it doesn't look like. So they have all their own products. Up here, I have, I use all these software programs to sort of um, do these analysis and scans. So if you have any questions or want to know what I'm using, um, just shoot me a, a, I don't know, go over to Twitter, probably is the best place, and, sh and uh, shoot me a tweet, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer you. But right here, I'm using Ahrefs. Um, showing the domain authority, the rank, um, backlinks. So this is a decent, decent sized website. Um, this is good. Okay. So let's go back here. Amazon's ranking number one, Amazon's ranking number two. You got your local retailers where you can go in. They're selling them at Walmart, Joanne Fabric, Target. Best tie-dye kits for crafters. Now, today.com. This shows you something. And this is the stuff I geek out about when doing market research. By the way, this is for everybody who's an entrepreneur, a business owner, a CEO of a big company, a product development specialist, a marketing manager. Because this type of research shows you what consumers are interested in and what other retailers are doing to... Um, to promote their products and what media companies are doing and who they care to, to, uh, to tie in these industries and generally what people care about, right? And you need to know what people care about in your particular industry, obviously, um, but also understand consumerism or even human behavior for your B2B company. So what does this show us that the number two, one, or two, 
Uh, three ranking site is today.com, the 15 best tie dye kits for crafters of all ages. Number one, they're, today.com, their target audience is probably moms, to be honest with you. I think that's probably the, pe the people that watch the Today Show the most and go to the Today website. So these are moms. These are moms with kids. Uh, um, and 15 best tie dye kits is clearly a, a, a popular topic for them because they've invested in trying to rank here. They're also probably doing affiliate marketing. So today.com is getting affiliate revenue from Amazon here, probably from Michaels. Um, here's another, this is, a, this is a link to another blog post. So this is the world of affiliate marketing and SEO right here. So today.com is making revenue. They're get, making money off of recommending these kits to Amazon, to Michaels, um, or recommending to the audience, but for uh, purchasing on Amazon, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, Walmart, Etsy. Okay, they're making money off of this, this post. Um, and the today.com is a, is, a, is a popular website. They have a domain rating of 90 out of 100. That's high. That's great. They have... Let's see. They have, oh my gosh, they have so much linking going on. They have so many backlinks. Um, to this one article, they only have seven backlinks. But they get about 3,000 global organic reach tra search traffic from this one blog post. But the site itself is huge. Uh, the site itself has 34, almost 35 million backlinks. So anyways, I digress. Okay. So uh, just taking a quick other look here. Michaels, they're ranking high. Walmart. Uh, this one's cool. I saw this one earlier. Okay, so this is, this is an affiliate marketer. This is just a blogger. Sarah Maker is, is her website. I'm not sure what her name is, but she ranks number four in organic search for tie-dye. Right amongst Walmart, right amongst Amazon. She even ranks above a company that's literally selling tie-dye kits, Dharma Trading Co., which they themselves have a pretty good-sized website. So how does she do this? Well, she ranks this way with backlinks. Um, it's just her blog, but she's an affiliate marketer. You can tell by going down here and looking at the um, links that she has here to Amazon, it looks like. She's, she's going to get paid if somebody clicks and buys any of these products. Okay. So now we know the who. We know who is selling these things. Michael, all the big players are selling them, but the ones that are also capitalizing on this industry are the, uh, not obviously the producers, uh, the manufacturers, the suppliers, but also the affiliates, marketers, or the media companies that, are, that are, have affiliations with them. So Sarah Maker's making money. The Spruce Crafts is probably affiliate. Yeah, here's affiliate links to Walmart, to Amazon. So the Spruce Crafts is also making making money. Okay, who's making these things? So I go over here to Alibaba and type in tie-dye kit. And we got all sorts of manufacturers. You know, most of this stuff is made in, you can see right here, all countries and regions, China, India, Japan, Pakistan, Turkey. This is where most of these products are going to be uh, coming from. The supplier is in China. This one's in China. Uh, and they're producing these kits for relatively low amount of money, $2.23. This kit is $0.68. Cents. This kit's $4.20. It's a little higher. Um, $2. And these kits are pretty good, 24 colors and fabric, uh, 24 colors in the kit. And it's only 2 bucks. And the minimum order quantity is one set. So that's pretty awesome. So let's just use... I don't know. Let's use $2. Looks like the average might be around $2 for these kits. So I go over here to my handy dandy um, spreadsheet here, and I'm going to type in cost of goods. So per unit, 
Whoa, good thing I typed. Per unit cost of goods sold. We're gonna put two dollars in there. All right, and we're gonna do a little. We're gonna do it a little Amazon case study here. So if we go over to Amazon, I typed in tie dye. Let's just do kit because as you can see, that's Frank's first here. It's the first suggestion, which means it's probably the most popular thing people are searching for. You got a company running ads up here. Um, you got some ads right here. These are all sponsored. And then you got some organic listings here. And you can see you got some ma you got a probably a few people, a few companies making major, major uh, dent in <laughs> in the uh, uh, collecting the, the actual sales. This one has 29,000 five-star reviews. That is a lot. And then you go over here, you got 106, you got 9,000 five-star, that's good. 3,000, almost five-star, that's good, 4.7. 4 Let's look at who's making these things. Tulip. 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 Down here to sponsored. Tulip. Uh, keep going down. Tulip. <laughs> so, Tulip. So the company Tulip that we saw earlier showing up, um, oh, did we see them earlier? Oh yeah, right here, Tulip. Tulip Colors running ads. So this brand is, is dominating, right? They, uh, they're a beast in the space. So for the sake of speed, let's just use Amazon to do our little analysis here. Um, I'm gonna, uh, what I usually do is I take one listing and I analyze it, come up with how much revenue they're making from this, and then just sort of make some educated guesses on how much money they might be making based on the other ones. This is, after this first little case study, the rest of it is in no way detailed uh, or research-backed. So a little disclaimer there. Okay, um, so let me do real quick here. So if you're still watching this, you geek out on this stuff like I do, right? I, I'm super curious about how industries grow and who the major player is, players are and how much money they're making and how they got there. And then I do, I sort of come up with my own assumptions on how we could make it even better, right? What would, if, if I all of a sudden acquired this company, like how would I make it even better? Uh, it's fun for me. And hopefully you can uh, learn a few things that you can apply to your own business. So we're going to use this listing Right here, it's the it's the bestseller listing on Amazon. It's got great almost almost thirty thousand reviews, and um, uh, we have the data here that I use from this tool I called that's called Jungle Scout. So this brand Tulip clearly been around for a little while. You can see some of their listings are as old as two thousand fourteen. Um, this one's not too. This one's Tulip twenty twenty. So at least two thousand fourteen, they've been on Amazon here. 2014, Tulip. Okay, so they've been around probably for a decade at least, and they were probably had their own website um, before they got into Amazon. So let's assume this is at least a decade old company. But one thing to to know here is on Amazon, age of listing is is uh, important. It's just like SEO. The age of the website, the older the website, uh, generally the more data there is, more history, and Amazon likes that just like Google likes that. So. This listing right here, let's dive into it. It's getting monthly sales of 24,641 units sold. So even though we went to Google Trends and it looks like it was like low, that doesn't, because it's a niche site, that is normal. The Google Trends aren't going to be massive for a niche site, but that does not in any way mean that there is not crazy amount of money, like $10 billion worth of sales going on. So this this listing has monthly sales units of 24,641, has daily of 821. Their monthly revenue is 405,837 in monthly sales. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna do the monthly, um, The monthly sales, I don't know why I have should be monthly sales here. So the monthly sales, 400, okay. So out of that, 
Um, that's revenue. So they're netting $7.27. So they're actually netting less than they're paying in fees, which is not necessarily, with the quantity, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, they're still probably making a boatload of money. But let's just say this is their monthly net. Um, I'm a little backwards here. So this, let me, let me do, let me do, let me do monthly units. Hold on, bear with me here. My team might cut this out anyways. Okay, so monthly units are 24,600. The cogs are this. Okay, monthly sales are this. The monthly net, I'm actually going to do per unit net. Okay, this will be easier. This sheet must be left over. So monthly net now equals units times this. Okay, so out of that, they're netting $179,140. You know what's crazy? Amazon is making more money than they are from this. <laughs> from this. I, I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, you know, you got to look at the total cost to, to produce it. So it's $2 here. So the total cost equals the units times two dollars and I'm uh, gonna get rid of that so the total cost of goods is f almost fifty thousand dollars and they're doing this minus this okay so they're netting a hundred and twenty nine thousand eight hundred and fifty eight dollars after all the expenses the cost of the goods and the fees going to Amazon right all right and then annually this is bringing them in one million five hundred and fifty-eight thousand two hundred and ninety-six dollars. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, maybe they can make a little bit more, um, but it seems like it's a pretty low-cost product. So I don't know if they could really get that. So, anyways, uh, now we look at payroll. So they pro they have people in there, obviously doing the work. And so usually, what I do for this is I just put in. $150,000 specifically for Amazon because there's at least one person, and I just use $50,000 as a blanket sort of salary here in the United States. You have one person that's managing the actual Amazon account. You have one person that's anal that's managing sort of the, the chargebacks and the billing and uh, customer service problems from Amazon. And then you have one person who's managing the, uh, or, or you know, managing the warehouse. There's definitely more than that in this particular company because this company is on Amazon, they're on eBay, they're on Etsy probably, they have their own website. But because we're only looking at one listing, I just use these three people as the general amount of payroll being put into this one listing. It's not exact, but it gives us an idea of where we are. So at the end of the day, the total profit from this one listing is $1 million four hundred and eight uh thousand two hundred and ninety six dollars that is still pretty damn good okay so that's one listing that's this one listing right here and we have look at these other listings here tulip right here tulip right here i mean we could do the same thing with this this one's making eighty eight thousand dollars in revenue um they're making about half of that so 40,000, 40, multiply that times 12, and you got five half a million dollars. So they have listings all over here. So they're making $10 million plus from Amazon easily, easily. And then their competitors who are smaller are still making decent money here. Uh, but it also looks like it's kind of a competitive space. So if you're thinking in your brain, wow, I should get into this, it's probably going to be pretty hard because Tulip is, is kind of dominating. And it's not just one major company and then that's it. There's one major company and then there's, then there's other ones here. Okay. Uh, so the, that's, that's, that's the who. 
Uh, what are they selling? The kits, obviously. Uh, it's not. It, it's a little bit seasonal. So if we go back to the Google Trends, you can see a little bit seasonal in the summertime. It peaks a little bit, but it's not. Ah, I guess it is kind of. It is pretty crazy because it goes from like three to four interest, two, three, four, all the way up to thirteen, ten to thirteen. So it is seasonal. Sales slow down during the during the holidays. Um, where the distribution is everywhere you might think. Amazon. So Tulip is on Amazon. We'll focus in on the Tulip company. They have their own website. So right here, they have their own e-commerce. We're going to go or what? What's going on? There we go. They have their own e-commerce site selling. Actually, I want to know if this is only tie dyes or not. Tie dye kit dyes, dyes, dyes. It's only dyes. Super niche market that they are dominating. Domain rating of 41. It's not fantastic, but it's not terrible. Um, so this is a crazy, this is, this is an interesting industry. These, these tie dye kits are still inter interesting. Okay. We've been filming for a while. So the, the where they're distributed in the, uh, Amazon in, um, on their own website. I just want to see if Tulip is over on some of these other, like Walmart. Walmart. Tie-dye kit at Walmart. Tie-dye. There's Tulip again, running ads. Tulip. There we go. There they are. So they got great distribution. They're in all the necessary places. And I also assume that if you go to like Joanne Fabrics, that I would assume to, yep, Tulip right there. So Tulip is a beast. I bet you Tulip's a $100 million company, if not more. Because they're on Amazon, they're earning a million dollars, they're earning easily $10 million just from Amazon. That doesn't include Walmart, they're probably earning at least $5 million on, on Walmart. They're in these retail distributors like Joanne Fabrics, Target. I wonder, so they're in Michaels. So they're probably earning, <clears throat> just knowing other retail clients that we have, they're probably getting $8 million. Um, let's, say, let's say $10 million minimum from these other retailers. Yet yeah, more than that, actually, because they're in most of these major retailers. So they're probably getting $20 million. Yeah, they're a $100 million company for sure. Okay, last but not least, what would I do? So this company's got a great product. They're dominating the kit space, and they're they're focused on it too. Like it's it's the product that they sell, right? They have a cool – they have a name, Tulip. It's, rec, you know, memorable. So they have their own e-commerce. Oh, I didn't even include their own e-commerce. Uh, they're probably generating – a few million dollars from their own e-commerce as well. Definitely not as much as Amazon because people uh, people will go to Amazon to shop and they'll find it there. But they're running Google ads, which means it's probably profitable um, on the generating sales on their website. So they're running Google ads already. They got good distribution. I did see if they were running ads on Amazon. Um, can check that real quick. So on Amazon, uh, Tulip. There you go. Boom. They're running ads on Amazon. <clears throat> you know what I do want to know? <clears throat> Excuse me. Do what I know is I want to know if they tulip tie what they're doing on Instagram. Oh, nothing. Well, if this is them. Okay. This seems to be a common uh, theme that I'm coming up with. What I would do is I would go into influencer marketing 100%. Let me do TikTok here. See if they got anything going on TikTok cuz this is this would be the place. Tulip. Tulip tie-dye. Tulip tie-dye, tulip tie-dye. I don't even though these aren't the brand accounts. So they don't have a brand account. Um And there's really no this this isn't going to search Oh, it's going to make me log in. I should have done it on my phone. This isn't going to let me. 
they probably wouldn't even be hashtag tulip tie dye anyways. But what I would do is I would go into influencer marketing. Okay, so here you have a company that's probably $100 million. And people are already searching for tie dye kits just because somebody's like wearing a tie dye shirt and they're like, oh, I want to do that for my kids, right? They go do it. There's already this natural sort of interest and in, in, uh, seasonality that people are going to do fam with families, right? Just like we did at camp. But what I would do to <clears throat> encourage more people to get into this and even start to branch out into other uh, other communities, this could definitely be sort of like an influencer trend, creating your own tie-dye designs. So what I would do is I would come up with a few campaign ideas internally if I was in the Tulip space or Tulip was working with our agency. And I would come up with campaigns, something like, you know, unique tie-dye designs. Wouldn't call it that, call it way, something way more sexy, but uh, <clears throat> unique tie-dye designs. And I would go, I would send this to creators to create unique tie-dye designs like right create designs that are out of the norm like this one's a polka dot design but i decided to like splatter it with my own stuff and i would i would encourage influencers to do it and then i would also pay those influencers to uh hold contests with their audience to create their own designs so the influencer creates theirs they name their own hashtag their own campaign and say hey i'm going to be giving away you know, a year's supply of tie-dye kits or, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe I'll be giving away a hundred of my own tie-dye designs or something like that. Limited edition to the hundred people that, that make the best tie-dye designs. I would put that out to my, uh, to my audience as an influencer. I would encourage the influencer to put that out to their audience and then let it roll, baby. You know, these things are too, you just saw the kits are $2 from Alibaba. So I would send out 10,000 of these things. That's 20 grand. I would send out 10,000 kits to influencers and tell every single one of those 10,000 influencers to hold a contest to their audience to create unique uh, tie-dye designs and the winners get something that's of value that the influencer you know, would give away, right? And I would just make sure that uh, I establish an affiliate relationship, so ties in affiliate marketing with each of those influencers for my website because you're already getting sales on Amazon and Walmart and these other platforms. But where you probably, where they probably need more sales or want more sales because the margins are higher, are on their own website. And so I would have an affiliate program for my website and have all of those influencers sign up for the affiliate program. So that when they're promoting the contest to submit your own tie-dye designs, they're also saying, you know, you can get your tie-dye supplies here. So if, the, if your users don't have a tie-dye kit, they can go click on your link, buy the tie-dye kit, uh, and you're generating sales. This is actually, the more I talk about this, this is getting me super excited because you're tying together influencer marketing and affiliate marketing. So you don't have to spend any money on advertising, interrupting people's day on YouTube ads or things like that, which does work, but this is a much more effective way and efficient way to do it. Using influencer marketing, people already have the audiences, and you're using affiliate marketing, meaning they get paid on the back end unless they're a big influencer, and you're just sending out a super cheap product for two bucks, and you're getting 10,000, I don't know, let's do some quick math, 10,000, products you're sending out or 10,000 influencers. Let's say each of those influencers has an average audience of 5,000 times 10,000. That's 50 million impressions. Did I do that right? Yeah. 5,000 followers. Uh, by the way, that's 5,000 followers that would actually see it because if you work with the big influencers, you know, the entire audience isn't going to see it. Yeah. Wait, 5,000 times, what did I say? I was going to send out 20,000 of these things. I didn't say 10,000. I said 20,000. Anyways, if it's 10,000, that's a 50 million. If it's 20,000, that's a hundred million people that are seeing this thing. That is exposure, my friends. And if you're wondering about the cost analysis, so I'm sorry, my brain is fried right now. It's 10,000 people, but it would be $20,000 in cost. 
So if you have to pay out of those 10,000 influencers, let's say you pay half of them. So 5,000 and you pay them for one post. Let's just assume you pay them $500. Well, that's actually a lot of money, $500. That'd be $2.5 million. So that's a big nut. <laughs> All right. So what I would do now analysising with the analysis, I would still go to 10,000, but I would focus on micro influencers. So my, my reach might be a little less than 5,000. So let's say I only pay, let's say I only pay a thousand of those influencers. That's a half a million dollars plus the 20,000 to send them the products. I don't know, plus another 10,000 for shipping. It's probably too much. That's $530,000 to get 50 million impressions. And it's not even just impressions. This is going to get engagement because half of those people are going to enter the contest anyways. And so you're getting now the exposure of the audience itself. So that will multiply and compound into the hundreds of millions of impressions. Oh, I hope we can... <laughs> I'm excited about this strategy. I, I'm, I'm going to go back to my team at Good Monster and figure out if there's a client we can pitch this idea to because this is getting me excited. So anyways, there you have it. The tie-dye kit industry. $10 billion industry between the producers of it, probably over in China, the resellers of it, the brands of it. Um, $10 billion in revenue is, is insane. And the breakdown of that is it looks like there's one major player here in the United States at least, which is Tulip. And they're probably doing $100 million plus in that space. And I just got super geeked out about a strategy that I think would work very well. But what is the takeaway for you and your company um, and my company? Well, my takeaway is that little strategy at the end there where you pair influencer marketing with affiliate marketing and a contest that is fun and exciting for their audience. Everybody wins. The customer wins. The influencer's audience wins, the influencer wins, and the brand wins, and the manufacturer wins because they're going to be selling a shitload of tie-dye kits. So think of that sort of strategy and see if it's something you can apply to your business. Engaging an already engaged audience is one of the most efficient marketing strategies there is. Influencer marketing, affiliate marketing is a great way to do that, especially if you have a brand that's already fun and popular and, and has some value like Tulip does. Listen, if you thought this video was interesting, you geek out about this stuff like I do, please share this with your friends, your coworkers, your boss, anybody who you think might get value from this. Uh, I'm just trying to engage uh, all of you out there and, and hopefully it's valuable for you. Listen, if you're in the marketing industry, calculating and measuring and projecting ROI is without a doubt the number one concern you have. In fact, HubSpot and many other uh, media companies and research say that that is the number one concern of most chief marketing officers and marketers out there is generating an ROI from your marketing. Well, that is exactly what my agency, Good Monster, does. We are a performance marketing agency focused on generating fast ROI and then scaling those campaigns up. We've done it for clients like Amazon and Google and Toyota and Samsung, as well as challenger brands like Radius and Bayaba. Uh, so if you are in the market of generating a better ROI for your brand, shoot us a message. All you got to do is head over to Google, Google Good Monster Agency, uh, and we'd love to help you out. Somebody on my team will definitely nurture you along your journey to a better ROI. So head over to Google, type in Good Monster Agency, and we'll talk to you soon.